Hi guys, welcome to Binary Source. This is the second and final part on how to code on Android. In this video, I'll show you some really cool tips and tricks which will make coding on Android more efficient and comfortable. Since this video is a continuation of the first part, please make sure you have watched the first part and are able to compile and run programs as shown at the end of part 1. Also, please make sure that you have installed all the programs which were shown in the first part. I have provided the link of first part in the description in case you haven't watched it. Before we start, we will need a few programs installed on our Linux subsystem. They are tmux, git and neofetch. Please make sure all the programs which were required in the first part are also installed on your system. To install this, type apt get install and the name of the programs. This command might differ depending on what Linux distro you have installed. While these packages are downloaded and installed, let me tell you why do we need each one of them. First, tmux. tmux stands for terminal multiplexer and simply put, tmux allows you to create and access multiple terminals from a single screen. How is this useful in our situation you might ask? Now think about it. We can open two terminals simultaneously on the same screen. On one, we'll be editing our code and on the other, we'll be compiling and running it. You'll understand it better when I give you a demo. Now let's move on to Git. Simply put, Git is a program which is used to manage versions of a software or a program more efficiently and in a collaborative way. But in our case, we are going to use it to save our code in a remote repository such as GitHub or Bitbucket. Now the last one, NeoFetch. Well, rather than speaking about it, it's better I directly show you how awesome it is later in this video. Before we start using these programs, let us install some really cool plugins for Vim. You can install as many as you want, but in this video, we are going to focus on just two plugins. The first one is SuperTab, which is a code completion plugin, and the second one is Monokai, which is a really cool theme. To install these plugins, we are going to use Vandal, which is a plugin manager for Vim. You can also do this without any plugin manager, but as of now, we'll be using Vandal to install and manage Vim plugins. Let us download Vandal by cloning from the GitHub repo. We now need to create a Vim configuration file in the home directory and add a few lines there. I have placed these lines in the description so that you can copy and paste them. Let's save the file and exit as shown in part 1. Now open the vim configuration file again. Type colon plugin install and press enter to install the plugins. Once Vandal is done installing the plugins, press colon Q to exit. Let's add a few more lines in the configuration file which will make the editor a little bit more user friendly. Again, you can find these lines in the description. Make sure you have saved it. I have created a short and simple video guide on how to use Vim as a text editor. You can have a look if you want to learn the basics of Vim. Video link is in the description. Let's see how cool the editor looks now.
we now have monokai theme applied we can now see the line numbers and we have set the numbers of spaces for the tab key press now let me show you how you can auto complete the code using the tab key just type sy and press tab to auto complete the system keyword and similarly we can auto complete other keywords also Now this part is going to be really cool. We are going to use tmux to create and access two terminals at the same time. Run tmux and then press Ctrl plus B and then percent to open another terminal horizontally. To move between these terminals use Ctrl plus B and then the arrow keys. With the help of tmux we can open and edit the code in one terminal and we can compile and run it in the other one. Now I know it's going to be a little bit difficult but for a quick guide on how to use tmux or if you are having problems using tmux please visit the video mentioned in the description. It is short enough not to take much of your time but it is informative enough to make you comfortable with tmux. Let's move to git now. We'll be using git mainly to push and pull that is upload and download our code so that we can program on different machines without having to write the same code again and again. First make sure you have a remote repository. I'll be using github here and have already created a remote repo on github. Feel free to choose any other platform such as bitbucket. I have already cloned the remote repo and now we can directly push the code to the remote repository on github. First let's add the java code file to the stage and commit the changes. Please note that commit messages like this are considered very unprofessional in the industry but this is just a tutorial so please bear with me. Now let's push the code to the remote repo using git push command. In this way we can continue working on our code from the same status on another machine without having to write the code again. For a quick guide on git please visit the video mentioned in the description. Like the tmux video, it is short enough not to take much of your time but informative enough to make you comfortable with git. Let's move to the last program which is NeoFetch. Well, uh, to be honest, it is not a utility for programming, but when we run NeoFetch, we are presented with a very beautiful and organized status of our machine, which in my opinion looks very cool. That's it guys, congrats on making it this far. Please note that this is a very minimal basic environment for development. Once we have Linux, the possibilities are pretty much endless. If you want, you can take all this to a much higher level.
Thanks for watching guys and if you want to learn the basics of Vim or Tmux or Git, please make sure to check the videos mentioned in the description. If you encountered any issues while following the same process in your machine, please mention them in the comments. I'll be happy to solve them. If you loved this video and want more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. It will mean a lot to me and give me confidence to create more videos like this. Stay safe and keep learning. Bye.